Hi, I'm Wendy from Children's Discovery in Sydney, and this is the Little Bang Discovery Club. Today, we're going to learn all about how experiments work. Now, just to remind you, the children should be doing this session with a grown-up. They are the junior discoverers doing all the thinking, and the adults are their lab assistants who are helping them. So let your child do some thinking and talk to your child about what they're thinking. It also might be best, especially today, when I show you how to set up an experiment to then pause the recording and try and do the experiment and then come back to the recording. Now, last week we learnt about measuring and recording and you might remember we made our coat hanger balance. So hopefully you made your coat hanger balance and used it a lot. And then I showed you how to make a mobile so I'm hoping that you managed to make a mobile and I'm also hoping that you did lots of measuring and wrote down what you measured. Now I'd like you to talk to your adult about something new you discovered, either using the coat hanger balance, use it, making your mobile or doing some measuring. So talk to your grown up now about something new that you discovered. Now today we're learning about what an experiment is. We've already done a bit of experimenting, like when we were using our coat hanger balance, we were doing experiments. So usually the way scientists do a, an experiment is, first of all, they've got a question. They want to know something. Which thing was heavier was our question before the coat hanger balance experiment. Then they make a guess or a prediction, which one they think is going to be heavier. Then they do a test. So you put the things into the coat hanger balance you observe what happens and then scientists will write down what happened and then they come to a conclusion about their experiment. So it's an evidence-based conclusion. They might have guessed one thing would be heavier, but the actual evidence showed the other thing was the heavier thing. So they make conclusions based on evidence. Now we're going to do some experimenting and I've set up an experiment here. So in a moment, I'd like you to try and do the same thing. Now, I've got a box that I'm resting a mini whiteboard on, but you don't have to use a mini whiteboard. You might use a piece of cardboard, or you might use a tray, or you might use the lid of a box to make your slide. So we're trying to make a slide, and you might not use a box to rest it on. You might use a low chair. You might use a pile of cushions. Doesn't matter as long as you've got a slide. Now, I'm sure you all know how slides work. You sit at the top, you let go, and you slide down thanks to gravity. Well, we're going to be doing some testing of which thing is the quickest down the slide. So from your discovery box, I'd like you to choose some things. First of all, can you please find for me your ruler and your pencil. So ruler and a pencil. If you haven't got a ruler, choose something else. So let's have a look and see which one slides the fastest. Now you can touch them and feel which one do you think is the slipperiest that will go the quickest down the slide. So have a, have a guess with your grown up. Tell your grown up which one you think is going to be the quickest. And then let's watch what I do. So here we are. We've got our two things on the slide. I'm going to say ready, set, go, and then we'll see which one is the quickest. Ready, set, go. Now, the ruler got there first, but was that fair for the pencil? What did I do to make it unfair for the pencil? Talk to your grown-up. What was wrong with my test? Now, I'm hoping that you all said... I didn't let them go at the same time. If it's going to be a fair slide, you've got to let go at the same time. Okay, so this time I'm going to try and let go at the same time and we'll see which one is the quickest down the slide. Now, once again, you can have a new guess because you've already seen this experiment, even though it wasn't fair. And if you want to change your mind, you're allowed to. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to let go at the same time. Ready, set, go. Okay, now the ruler still got there first, but 
was it a fair test? Talk to your grown up. There's still something wrong with this test. What's wrong with starting them like this? Have a talk to your grown up. Now I'm hoping that you realized that the ruler starts from down here and only has to go this far. Whereas the pencil starts from up here and has to go this far. So that's not very fair. Talk to your grown up about how we can change something so that they both slide the same amount. Now, sometimes children have suggested to me that we should cut the ruler off about there to make it fair. And sometimes children have suggested to me that we should stick two pencils together to make it fair. So they're both items end up being the same length. Now, that's not so easy to do. Another solution, which you might have thought of too, is let's make the starting line the same. So now, both objects are, have, to, have to slide down the same distance. All right, have a guess which one's going to be the quickest. You're allowed to change your mind. Ready, set, go. Oh gosh, it's hard to tell, isn't it? We'll try that once more. And with the magic of recording, we might even be able to get it in slow motion so we can see which one is the quickest. Let's try that again. Ready, set, go. I think the pencil just got there. Now, you're going to test some things down your slide. You can test your ruler and your pencil. And then you can choose some more things from your discovery box like your chopstick. Say, say the pencil was the fastest. Maybe keep it and test it against the chopstick or your big spoon. Then if the pencil's still the fastest, perhaps you'll test it against the coat hanger. And then you might like to test it against the magnet. So feel each thing. See which is the slipperiest one, have a guess, and then test, and, but test it fairly and see which one is the best slider. Okay, so how did you go? Did you get expected or unexpected results? And what was the fastest thing down the slide for you? I'd like to show you how my experiment went with the pencil and the magnet. So there's a magnet on the back of this little fish so when I put them on, making sure that they start out at the same spot. Oh, maybe I should put the fish pointing down so it can swim down quickest. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Oh no. My fish didn't slide at all. Now there's a reason for that. This is a magnetic whiteboard. So the fish didn't have a hope of sliding. Was that a fair test for the magnet? No, what do I need to do instead to make it fair for the magnet? Talk to your grown up. How could we make it fair for this magnet to slide down our slide? Now I'm hoping that you thought use something else that's not magnetic. So if you have some cardboard, for example, let's put our things on the cardboard. Actually, I'll use the tray because it's a bit longer. Okay, which one do you think will be the fastest this time? Ready, set, go. Oh, hard to tell. But at least that time, the magnet could slide. Now, you can do more sliding experiments or you might like to try something a little bit different. Instead of sliding things, you might like to try some small wheel toys and try them rolling down the slide. So this time I've got a sporty looking car made of metal so it's heavier and I've got a red plastic locomotive. Now which one do you think will be the fastest down the slide? The sporty car or the locomotive? Have a guess with your grown up. Okay here we go. Ready, set, go. Oh, 
<laughs> well, the car went a very long way in the distance. So if we were if we were not just racing down here, but who can go the furthest, it would definitely be the car. So there's a different type of experiment that you can try after they've gone down the slide, which toy can roll the furthest. So now's the time to do some more sliding with things from your discovery box or from your house or with your toys. Uh, but remember, make it fair and guess first which one you think will be the quickest. When we get back after that, I'm going to be showing you how to do some more experiments. Okay, now that you know how to do a fair test or an experiment like they do in science, I'm going to show you four experiments that you can do at home. It would probably be a good idea to see how I set them up and then press pause and go and try them. And when you do them, you need to predict what's going to happen and see if you get any expected or unexpected results. Now, our first experiment is using our magnet. So I've got my little fishy magnet from before and you're, I'm going to test what it will stick to and what it doesn't stick to. So in the space you're in or around your house, take your pencil and paper so that you can make a list of what it sticks to and what it doesn't stick to. And before you try it on something, have a guess. Do I think it's going to stick or not? So here at the, it's a plastic table that I'm working on. I don't think it's going to stick. No, it's not sticking. But if I have a look underneath and there's some metal there, do I think it will stick there? Oh yes, it's trying to stick. Yep, yep, it's sticking. So try your magnet on all different materials and make a prediction, will it stick or not? And then afterwards write down whether it did stick or what it, what it does stick and what it doesn't stick to. The next one is called musical coat hanger. And for this, you need a metal coat hanger and two pieces of string about 45 centimeters long. Now in one end of one piece of string, you're going to tie a loop that you can put your finger into. So my finger will fit in there. And the other end you tie to the coat hanger. And then you do the same thing with this piece of string, tie a loop. And tie it on to the coat hanger. Now, I'm going to ask my colleague Adam to help me with this one because I've got the coat hanger being dangled by the strings and the coat hanger is going to be a percussion instrument so we're going to strike it or hit it and Adam, wh what would you like to hit it with? The stick, the spoon or the pencil? Hmm. Maybe, maybe it will make a difference. Maybe it will. Okay, let's try one then we'll try another one. All right, ready? Yep. Little bit musical. Hmm. Try the spoon. Oh, even more musical. Now, this time though, instead of just holding the coat hanger here, I'm going to put my fingers in my ears and Adam's going to hit the coat hanger again. Wow! What? That was amazing! It didn't sound amazing to me. Can I have a go? Yeah. What would you like me to use? The pencil, the stick, or the spoon? Let's do the pencil. Pencil? You've got the pencil. I've got the pencil. Yeah. Okay, fingers in. Ready? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, set up your musical coat hanger and let everyone in your family try it because it is amazing. Now, the next experiment we're going to try is called sink and salt. So, here we have two cups with tap water in them. Now I'm using transparent cups so that you can see, but they don't have to be. They can be colored cups, they can be ceramic cups, just something that will hold the water. 
Now I've also got a quarter of a cup of salt and in my bowl I've got a hard boiled egg and a grape. So what we're going to do is pour the salt into one of the cups and give it a stir. So now you can see that we've got plain tap water and salty water. Now the experiment that you're going to do is to carefully float the egg on top of the water and see what it does. But before you do, you need to make a prediction, have a guess. Do you think it's going to sink or do you think it's going to float? So either using a hard boiled egg or a grape, try that. I'm not going to actually do it because I want you to try it. Now grown-ups, it might be an idea for you to hold the cup so it doesn't get bumped while the children are carefully putting the egg in to the water. And then you might like to use a spoon to help get the egg out. And once again, grown-ups, if you hold the cup. So before you try the experiment though, make sure that you have a guess what's going to happen. So it's just cups of water and a quarter of a cup of salt poured into one and given a little stir. Okay, try that one. Now our fourth experiment for today is called sink and float. And this time you've got three cups with water in them. And this is where you need your blue tack or your plasticine. So using the same amount of blue tack, you're going to make three different shapes. So the first shape is going to be a round or a spiral shape. So if you roll your blue tack up to make a round or a spiral shape. The next shape is going to be a flat shape. So perhaps fold your blue tack into about three and mush it together to make a flat shape. And your third shape is going to be a boat or a cup shape. So you probably want to start off with a flat shape like that, squash it together and then make it into a cup or a boat shape. And like before with the egg that you're putting into the tap or the salt water, you want to carefully put these shapes onto the top of the water to see if you can get them to float. So. Once again, grown-ups, perhaps you hold the cup so that the children can carefully with two hands put their shape onto the water and see if it will float. But before they do, what do you need to do? Make a prediction or have a guess. Do you think the round shape is going to sink or float? Do you think the flat shape is going to sink or float? Do you think the bowl or boat shape is going to sink or float. Now, in a moment, you're going to go away and have a go at that one as well. What I'd like you to think about is what is going on in these experiments? Why is this happening? Next week, we will start our last session explaining the science behind what happened in these experiments. But it's really good if you can have a think about it in the meantime. Try and think about what is happening why did this happen? So that's what we'll start with next session, explaining what went on. Now, next session, as well as a boiled egg, you'll need a raw egg too. So grown-ups, you need to prepare a boiled egg and have a raw egg, but don't tell the children which one is which, and don't put, you know, don't write boiled on it so that they know. We want them to not know which egg is which. So a boiled egg and a raw egg for next time. All right, so you've got lots of things to go and try and try and do some thinking about what is going on.